This video is going to try and explain the nature of reality using physics supported by mathematics. By the word reality, I mean the reality of our everyday life with a past and future that is always uncertain. Each one of us is always in the moment of now, looking out at the universe with an objective reality that is always spontaneously changing, moment by moment. Throughout this changing process, consciousness remains in the moment of now. This is happening within a process that we measure over a period of time and see and feel as a flow of time. It might seem like madness to try and explain this using physics and mathematics because modern physics has no understanding of the moment of now and no real understanding of what consciousness is. Also without a concept of the moment of now we can have no real understanding of time and why we have a future that is always uncertain. This theory takes a simple principle that large objects are always based on the interactions of smaller objects. Therefore it is logical that to understand the nature of reality we have to look down into the atoms. When we do this we find the physics of quantum mechanics that only really has a mathematical understanding. The odd thing is that the mathematics of quantum mechanics does not form certainty but uncertainty in the form of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. In this theory the uncertainty in everyday life in the form of a future that is always uncertain is based on the process that forms Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. If we look at the process that forms Heisenberg's uncertainty principle we find that it is formed by the quantum wave particle function. This is a mathematical function formed by the spontaneous absorption and emission of light. Therefore we have a process that is spontaneous just like the flow of time in our everyday life with a future spontaneously coming into existence moment by moment. In this theory quantum mechanics represents the physics of time as a physical process with the future coming into existence photon by photon with each new photon electron coupling or dipole moment. Light has momentum and momentum is frame dependent therefore we have a process that will form its own reference frame. Because light is an electromagnetic wave this also represents the movement of electromagnetic fields with the flow of electrical activity and charge. If we then dumb down consciousness to the level of electrical activity in the brain that is aware of its own electrical potential. By doing this we can place the individual in the moment of now in the center of their own reference frame relative to this electrical activity. This personalization of the brain can give us a concept of mind with each one of us in the moment of now in the center of our own reference frame with their own individual view of the universe being able to look back in time in all directions at the beauty of the stars. Only by dumbing down consciousness in this way can the conscious stream of unbroken ever-changing flow of ideas, perceptions, feelings and emotions that make up our lives be explained as the most advanced part of one universal process. It is an illusion that consciousness is independent and separate from time and space. Consciousness does not just perceive reality, it is an interactive part of reality. To understand this we have to look at the nature of time and space in Einstein's theories on relativity. In his theories space and time are interactive and are interlinked as space-time. The energy and momentum of an object will distort space-time forming the curvature of space-time relative to their energy and momentum. This space-time distortion is in the form of time dilation. Objects slow up the rate that time flows relative to their own energy and momentum. Time and space do not exist independently. They are relative to the energy and momentum of an object. Once again, if we take the simple principle that large objects or processes are always based on the interaction of smaller objects or processes, we can ask ourselves what the smallest energy level would be that would form a base for this process. The logical answer is that photon energy is at the heart of this process. 
Therefore, each new photon oscillation or vibration represents a new moment in time and space. The universe is a continuum of continuous energy exchange or continuous creation that we measure as a process over a period of time and see as the expansion of space or expanding universe. Photon energy levels cascade down also forming greater degrees of freedom for the increase in entropy or chaos. The main effect of this on us is the aging process as time unfolds photon by photon. The interactive process that we find in Einstein's relativity is part of the same process that forms the interactive process of everyday life. I believe this is what we are seeing when we see an artist at work. We are seeing new light photon oscillations or vibrations continuously coming into existence relative to the actions of the artist. A continuous flow of cause and effect. We have free will because the wave particle duality of light is acting like the bits or zeros and ones of a computer. This forms an interactive process continuously forming a blank canvas that we can interact with, turning the possible into the actual. This theory explains a greater reality of one creative principle behind the laws of physics, forming something like a sounding board of a musical instrument that resonates with the vibrations of one's own thoughts, efforts and actions. These ideas have a profound effect on our understanding of consciousness. At any one moment in time, we can look out at the universe, seeing thousands of reference frames interacting with each other relative to their own energy and momentum, or actions. But we are only seeing the past, with our own consciousness being at the forefront of this process of continuous creation. Consciousness does not just perceive reality, it is reality, within the moment of now. There is nothing that is being objectively experienced. There is only a process forming an infinity of possibilities. In this theory, Newton's apple does not fall to the ground because of the downward force of gravity, but because of the upward momentum of electromagnetic radiation or light. Gravity is not a real force at all. It is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. Objects just free fall towards the greatest energy because it has the slowest rate of time or the greatest time dilation. I believe this can be seen in the mathematics with both the gravitational force and the electromagnetic force having the inverse square law. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. There is no mysterious action at a distance. The gravitational field will work at the speed of light because it is an integral part of one universal process with the electromagnetic force. We have one universal process that begins with the quantum wave particle function or probability function of quantum mechanics expanding out as an inverse sphere and ends with the inverse square law of gravity and Newton's third law of motion. To every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Gravity is the opposite reaction to the atoms radiating quantized spherical wavefronts of electromagnetic radiation. We have one interactive universal process continuously unfolding at the quantum level of the atoms. We see and feel this process as time, as a physical process of continuous energy exchange that is formed light photon oscillation by light photon oscillation. Objects form their own time by slowing up the rate that time flows relative to their energy and momentum. Gravity is not a real force at all. Objects just free fall towards the greatest energy because it has the greatest time dilation or the slowest rate the time flows. In this theory Mass is a byproduct of time dilation. When time slows down, it takes more effort to move an object from A to B, and this is seen as an increase in mass. Also, Einstein's equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration falls out of this theory. 
Because energy and momentum have to increase for an object to accelerate, time dilation will increase relative to the acceleration. Therefore we have the equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration. This will be felt as inertia in the direction of the acceleration. Therefore we have Isaac Newton's first law of motion. Unless acted upon by a net unbalanced force, an object will maintain a constant velocity. This theory takes the dynamic interactive process of the general theory of relativity and extends it to our everyday life, explaining a universe that is continuously coming into existence relative to the energy and momentum of our own actions. Every individual is a part of this interactive process that forms the uncertainty and probability that is needed for the great game of life. But above all, this theory gives us an objective understanding of time as a process of continuous creation. Even a rose blooming will create its own arrow of time within its own reference frame. This fits in with the reality of our everyday life. With a past and potential future that we can interact with from the centre of our own reference frame, turning the possible into the actual. This can be in the form of art and poetry. Therefore, even a dancer on the dance floor will interact with this process, forming their own future space time relative to their energy and momentum of their own actions. In this theory, creation is within the creative mind of the individual and within the eye and hand of the beholder. I will place links below to videos explaining the mathematics of this theory in greater detail. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, rate and share. It will help the promotion of this theory.